Good afternoon, everyone. It's Dr. Allison, and I am sitting here in my car. I just got done going for a run at the gym. And as I was at the gym, I was listening to a couple of YouTube videos about the body and connecting in and, of course, how that connects to disease and our dissociation from our body. And this week, I've been reading an interesting philosophy book um, about the... 1500s to the 1700s. So all of these philosophers, Descartes, uh, Hobbes, and a couple other dot guys who really fueled the transition of when we believed in the body, we believed in the body's ability to heal itself. We believed in herbs and the power of herbs and food to heal ourselves. And that was our original medicine, right? And what they decided to create is this disconnection from the body. And this almost sounds a lot like personal development books that you can read right now. And they're talking about how the body is really this disgusting thing. It creates urine and feces and saliva. And they just wanted to separate from that because the body is, is a workhorse and it has no control of its own. And the mind is the only thing that we need to worry about. And our mind has to control our body and our mind has to control our urges and hunger and sex and fear and sleep. And we can override the body. The body is useless now. The only thing that's important is the mind. And I, looking at that, that began in the 1500s, 1600s, and now it's 2019 and we have this total disconnect from our body. And all of these people call me and say, I'm so depressed. I'm so anxious. I need to control my body. I need to heal. I need to get over this. I need to push through it. <clears throat> and um, I just feel like, you know, how long have we been living with this mindset that our mind must control our body? Our body is totally separate from ourselves. Our body needs to be tamed and controlled and hurt and harmed with food and diet and exercise and starved to the point of we're literally killing ourselves. And when we start to feel into our body, I think it feels really scary because one, we're not used to it. Two, we don't like the feeling of pain or discomfort. And then we find that there's so much fear because you don't want to be sick. And sometimes when we're sick, then our mind goes off the ledge and we start saying things like tumors and cancers and autoimmune diseases and curables. And the doctors say, there's nothing wrong with you. Your blood work looks normal. Or we don't need to do testing because there's no reason. And we're just completely shut off. Your body's normal. It's all in your head. And that's typically what women hear. And obviously it stems for hundreds and hundreds of years where we're told, there's nothing wrong with your body. Your body is just a slave to your mind. You've got to get your mind right. And in reality, that's not how it works at all. We have to be connected to our body. We have to respect our body. We have to listen to our body's needs. And it's, it's hard, right? You want to nap, but you can't because you got to be at work. You want to eat, but you can't because you're somewhere else. There's, there's a lot of things that we're doing in our lives right now that set us up. But that doesn't mean you don't have to listen. So if you think there's something wrong, if you know there's something wrong, go find help. So if you're told there's nothing wrong with you, ditch that person, go find somebody else. If you feel like you're the only one, you're not the only one. And now my husband's watching, so I feel really nervous. Hi, honey. <laughs> go away so I can talk. Um, and... I think also when it comes to anxiety, we do feel like it's in the mind and it's not in the body where anxiety does live in the body and we can feel it and we can name it and we can experience it without it ruling us. So sometimes with anxiety, it's our mind ruling us and it's telling us we're bad, we're shameful, there's something wrong, or these irrational fears come up of everyone's going to die, or the house is going to be broken into, or I can't do this alone, or we're in fear of our finances, like we're never going to make it, I can't make it to the next paycheck, I'm not going to make it till I'm 60. And then we have this fear that lives in our body where we have panic attacks, our hearts racing, we have tightness in our chest, we have tightness in our shoulders, we have constant headaches, nausea, back pain, knee pain, really common with anxiety, and we run around 
with a laser focus, like a flashlight, like, well, my knee hurts and they were looking at her knee um, or my neck hurts. I'm going to go get adjusted and get a massage and nothing's ever working. These crazy chiropractors don't know what they're doing, but this whole time your chiropractor is looking at you and your shoulders are up to your ears. And so connecting into your body when you have these emotions, when you have these experiences, when you have anxiety, panic, depression, fatigue, and asking your body what's going on and not ignoring it. And I think there is a balance. And when you're trying to discover yourself, I saw a post that's been going around and it's push yourself to wake up and push yourself to wake up earlier and then push yourself to wake up earlier and earlier and push yourself to meditate and push yourself. I'm like, holy shit. Like everyone's like, oh, this is amazing. Look at this like amazing post. And I'm like, this is the opposite of what you should be doing. You don't necessarily have to push yourself. It might be a push to take care of yourself. And most women I talk to don't eat breakfast, don't eat lunch, maybe eat dinner, gorge on snacks at night, or <clears throat> are staying up too late because it's the only time to get away from the kids. And then they have to wake up super early because the kids are super up, are up super early and they get caught in this limbo. So maybe the push isn't wake up earlier. Maybe the push is take care of yourself better. What do you need mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually to bring yourself back into your body, to make a make your body your friend and not your enemy so you can let go of the fear, the anxiety, where you can work with someone who can help guide you through this path. So like me as a functional medicine doctor, you need a chiropractor to adjust you. You need your MD, your primary for emergencies and other things you need someone who does acupuncture or cst or energy work build your team that's my team so find your team that's going to help you engage with your body to find the emotions to go through the experiences find somebody and a therapist to walk through the behavior the past patterns <clears throat> a life coach someone who can dive in with you and hold your hand and not be like oh, I see you're really struggling with this issue or this abuse or this trauma. Good luck. Go journal on it. Or um, here's some medicine. You'll be fine. And just skate over it. Like there's, I know an amazing food therapist. A lot of women and men grew up with parents who struggled with weight issues and then turned their struggle with weight issues onto their children with guilt and shame and restriction and weighing their children every day since the time they were eight and punishing them if they missed the scale or they missed the mark or they weighed too much. We need therapy for that. And there's nothing wrong with that. So make that part of your team. Find somebody, ask other people for referrals. Who are you seeing? Because the more you can engage with your body and see it as a beautiful expression of who you are and see it as a partner rather than an enemy that you're trying to control, you're going to heal a lot faster. You're going to feel better faster. You're going to, you're going to find out what's wrong and why and how to make yourself do better. So that is my goal for you. My intention for myself as well, um, I think is a really important topic that I want to keep talking about this week. I would love to know what you think, if this resonates with you, or if you have favorite strategies that you like to use. I am going to keep my Achieving Beyond Anxiety program or enrollment open for another two weeks. Um, I've had a few people on the edge, like, I think so. I don't know. Do I want to do a private council? I don't know. So I want to make sure that everybody can get in who wants to get in. So what I'm doing is rebooting the 21 day anxiety reboot program and you'll have access to all the previous content from February. And then we're doing another two or three weeks of absolutely brand new content for you to support all of those good things. So it's $47 to hang out with us for the month or two that we're going to be doing this. And I say month or two because, you know, every time I do a program, it's different. Sometimes we run through the 10 days. Sometimes we need a lot more support and we can keep going. We do live Q and A's and we get all those questions answered. So I'm here for you guys to support you. And we're going to talk about neurotransmitters, sleep, more about food, my anxiety workbooks ready to go. We're going to talk about tracking and all of the things that you can do throughout the day, not pushing yourself, 
but tuning into yourself, making your body a partner, making the anxiety almost a partner, right? To figure out what's triggering you and how to balance that and then being able to move forward. And one of the things that I found over the past month and working with one of my coaches is that when I got triggered, I used to spiral down and I got really, really low, like suicidal low and um, bad times. And then it would take me like four or five days to recover, to come back up. And then lo and behold, another trigger would spiral me all the way back down. And it's exhausting. It's exhausting for me and it's exhausting for the people around me who have to deal with that. So what I found is that when I'm tapping into my body and seeing what's triggering me and going, I'm not the one who's crazy. I'm not having a panic attack. My brain is, my ego, my heart is going, oh my God, fear. Look at this bad thing. What if this happens again? Or someone said something. Or what if I'm not good enough? Or like we could go down that list of triggers and we will in the course. But instead of going, this is real, I'm bad, I'm, I'm, I am anxiety, I get to go, oh, I'm having a bad reaction. Oh, I see this now. This is how I'm feeling and it's not real, or if it is real, we manage it. And now I spiral down a little bit, but it's not all the way to the bottom every single time that I have an anxiety issue or I feel bad or something gets triggered. So that's what we're going to work on. Um, maybe that's what we'll talk about tomorrow for anxiety. So I'm going to drop the link below on the anxiety program. We kind of started today. I am going to roll some new information into the group so you can get started right now. And then we'll officially, officially, officially start in about two weeks so everybody can get in and process and um, figure out the support that you guys need so we can do our best for you. All right, I'm going to get home. Enjoy the rest of your day, and I'll talk to you guys tomorrow.